Hi guys, it's Sharon from House of Prayer. I'm here to bring you the prophecy of the last trumpet. Everything will change. The last trumpet. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, at the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpets shall sound, and the dead be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty one and 52 It is so amazing to know that we have a God who loves us and has given us the priority to rule and reign upon this earth. However, our reign it is limited. God has promised us an eternal reign with him in the age to come. The Bible tells us that the present world will be wrapped up and there will be a new heaven and a new earth where there will be no sorrow or sickness or death except this world passes away and the new world will come. But something must happen before this takes place. We must hear the sound of the trumpet. The Bible tells us that no one, not even Jesus Christ, knows the day or hour when this will take place, except for the Father himself. But of that day and hour, no one knoweth, no, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Matthew twenty four thirty six. This day will come as a surprise to the world because the there will be no prior notification. Apart from that, we have in Scripture. What doesn't this tell us uh, that we must live in the circumstances of who we are in God because we do not know when the Son of God will appear or take us home. Our lives must be reflected of love and holiness at all times because we cannot tell exactly when the end will come. Watch, therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Matthew 24 and 42. See also Mark thirteen thirty-five and Revelation 3, 3. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there will be no more sea. And first John saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepare as a bride adorned for her husband. Revelation 21, 1 and 2. The Lord has a special reward for his children, but the world cannot partake of it. This is why there must be a separation. The angel of the Lord shall blow the trumpet as Jesus appears in the sky. And we who believe in him, dead or alive, will defy the laws of gravity and be caught up with him in the skies, leaving the sinners behind at the mercy of the devil and his agents. Matthew 24, verse 3. This will be so rapid that no one will have a chance to change his mind at the last set minute. The catching up of the saints to be with the Lord is what we call the rapture. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. When the trump of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. First Thessalonians four and, and verses sixteen and seventeen. The sound of the trumpets is symbolic in the Old Testament. It was used as a call together, a sign to move or a call to war. Psalms 
81, 3 through 5. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed of our solemn feast day, and also in Leviticus 23, 24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Even the strong walls of Jericho were brought down after seven consecutive days of blowing trumpets. Joshua 6, 4-20 through 20. End time prophecies show that the sound of a trumpet precedes the day of the Lord. Joel 2, 1 Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the Lord tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming for it is at hand. The sound of the trumpet we will hear before the rapture is also an alarm for us believers to call us into the new life that awaits us. The blowing of the trumpet will mark our transition from this world of sin and to the kingdom of God, where we will receive forever the rewards for all we have done here on earth. And the nations were angry, and the wrath has come, and the time of the dead that they shall be judged. And thou shalt give rewards unto thy servants, and the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear the name. Small and great shouldn't destroy them, while destroy the earth, which destroys the earth. Revelation eleven eighteen. Our mortality will be swallowed up into the mortality of our bodies. Shall receive the final redemption. Corinthians fifteen fifty three. As we patiently Wait for the day to come. There is a positive we must maintain. 1 Corinthians 15.58 says, Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that you labor is not in vain in the Lord. We should live as Christ lived in his first coming. The Bible tells us that we weren't about that we went about doing good. Our lives must reflect the nature of God. We should live each passing day as though Christ would return on that day. We cannot afford to be carried away. By the uncertainty in the world, we have no business with the world because our destinations are different. In these last days, we must be discerning. We must stand by the words which have been spoken to us by God. If we are not grounded in God's knowledge and are insensitive to the Spirit of God, we will be tossed about by the wind of every new teaching. There are lots of false teachers and doctrine flying all over the place. If you do not know what the Word of God says for yourselves, everything will look true to you. More than ever before, you must activate the work of the Holy Spirit in you so that you can discern right from wrong. 1 Timothy chapter 3 13 and 14 says, But evil people and impostors will go from bad to worse as they deceive others as themselves deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and found to be true because you know from whom you learned it. As we can see millions of people still walking in the darkness of this world, and we have been sent to bring them into the light. 
there is no better time to do the work of the ministry. Go out, preach the gospel, get men saved and fulfilled with the Holy Ghost. Let God's kingdom on earth keep advancing as we await the trumpet sound that will take us to be with the Father forever. The finale of this episode in human history is explained well in John 14, 1 through 4. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am. Amen and amen and amen.